Greetings, my fellow motion people. I'm glad you could join me. This is part one of a series of tutorials showing you how to create a crystal city in Cinema 4D and After Effects. In part one, we will be creating a procedural crystal cluster using polygons, cloners, effectors, mo extrude, and some deformers as well. Now, uh, join me as we kick it into uh, Cinema 4D. What we want to start with is creating the crystals, right? And this first step is probably the most difficult. I'm going to create a single polygon by just clicking the Make Polygon button. <laughs> Alright, there it is. Now, as soon as you've recovered, you want to command drag that polygon to make a copy and then turn that polygon into a triangle. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a disc as well and really turn down the rotation segments and also the uh, disc segments, we don't need any of those. And I'm going to have to make this one, uh, let's first make it a little bit smaller and then make the other polygons a bit smaller as well. And then I'm going to have to make the disc editable. So I select the disc, press C and then I select the polygons to get rid of these lines and right click go dissolve because we don't want the lines for this. Then I'm going to go create a cloner and add all those polygons to the cloner. I want the cloner to be a grid array and I want it to be quite big. Uh, so just a thousand by a thousand. Don't want any copies on the y-axis. I just want a big plane of, of just clones of these polygons. So I want quite a lot of clones on the x and the z-axis. Whoa, whoa. Uh, steady on. That's a bit too many clones. Uh, let's dial it back. Just, just 20 on the X and then 20 on the Z. Yeah, that's a bit, bit better spaced out now. <laughs> right, so let's group this by clicking Alt G and naming that crystal. No, wait, crystals, because there's many of them. Plural, that's plural. Stay in school, kids. Now let's go in under MoGraph and create a Mo extrude and add that to our group. You will find that everything is in three dimensions, which is good. Unfortunately, our crystals are a bit rounded, so let's go into the polygons and select their phone tags and just delete, which gives us nice and sharp edges. And let's go into the cloner and change the clone mode to random, and we'll get a nicer distribution of our clones. Now let's go back to the Mo extrude for a moment here, because uh, as, you, as you can see, it gives us four extrusion steps by default, and we just need one for this. So we'll go in and change extrusion steps to one, now let's tweak the transform a bit, because we don't want any of the scale changed, but we do want it to extrude further. So let's really turn up the Z position, because that's along the normal of the polygon, and they're pointing up, so Z position, that's further up. Cool, that's a nice pattern actually, but it doesn't look like crystals yet. So now I'll show you this one simple trick that all diamond miners hate. Let's go to deformers and create a bevel deformer, where are you there? Bevel deformer which just bevels the edges and let's turn up the offset a lot and you'll see that we're starting to get quite crystal like shapes if we turn up too much <laughs> they they uh, all intersect um, yeah uh, oh, they still do still intersect a bit let's turn that down just a little bit more than maybe somewhere around 14 yeah yeah 14 works now shape wise these look a lot more like crystals now uh, but they're they're still a bit too perfect. So let's go up to MoGraph Effectors and create a random effector. And add that before the Mo extrude, that's important. I'm going to Deformer and activate Point Deformation. Whoa, uh, <laughs> that's a bit wild. Now let's remove just all uh, position deformation, especially especially on the Z-axis. Because what the Z-axis does, let me show you, it just moves moves up and down along the along the normal of the polygon and uh, that's that's just gonna fuck everything up so let's uh, set the other ones to maybe 10 10 ish um, that's that's probably enough but you can kind of see here that they all deform in the same way uh, they deform randomly but they all deform randomly in the same way so if we go into the uh, the random effector and change the random mode to uh, either noise or turbulence I'm gonna go for turbulence and then I'm going to turn off the animation, turn that down to zero. Otherwise we get these uh, dancing crystals. And I don't want dancing crystals, uh, so I'm just going to turn that down and turn down the scale as well. And now you see that they're all kind of, they all look random. Let's turn everything back on and see what it looks like with extrusion and bevel. 
Right now they're intersecting again, so let's turn down the bevel. You more notches. Just one, two. Yeah. So now we got this field of crystals, yeah. Looking nicer by the minute, but I still want it more random. So let's copy the uh, the random effector. Come on, drag that and add that after the extrude, the mo extrude. Now with this one, I actually want to distort in Y space, but I'm gonna start by turning down the position down to zero and change the transform space to effector space. So when I tweak the Y axis, it's on the Y axis of the effector itself. So now that makes it a little bit more random. You can't tell much of a difference but it's in there and I think you and I will both sleep better tonight knowing it's in there. Alright, now it's time to randomize the size of the crystals themselves. So go into the Mo extrude and turn the extrusion down for now. And instead we will be creating a random effector to control the extrusion. Now that immediately makes everything look terrible. So let's turn down the transform and just transform on the uh, Z axis. Cool. Now that's about as much as I want them to extrude, but with the tutorial being called Crystal City, I kind of would expect it to look a bit more like a city. And a city usually has high rises in the center and lower buildings further out. So let's create a fall off, spherical fall off. Now it's not immediately going to have an effect and I'll sort that in a second, but first let's just make it bigger so it covers the whole, the whole field of crystals. And let's go up in filter actually and activate deformers so you can see the fall off. Right, so now it covers the whole area but it still does not have an effect. Um, basically what we need to do is to connect the, um, the cloner object. It, it has to do with the uh, the extrude, the Mo extrude affecting per polygon and it not seeing it as one single object and it's it's all a bit convoluted. But just select the uh, the cloner object and create a connect object with Alt held down and that's going to make the cloner a child of the connect object. And our fall off immediately works. But now polygons are rounded again and we didn't want that. So let's go into the connect object and change the Fong mode to manual which makes the Fong whatever the Fong tag is, and we don't have one, so it's set to zero. Now, about this overall shape, I want it sharper and overall more city-like, so I'm going to go into the falloff and draw a, a spline curve here in the falloff, and let's turn up the falloff percentage to 100%. That way we get the very highest crystals right in the center and lower crystals the further out we go. And I want this really sharp, because you know, it, you, you get in a city the high rises in the center and those are really tall compared to all the other buildings around. So let's just... Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty good. But let's just go ahead and tweak this until until we get the the right look for it. Tweaky, tweaky, tweaky. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that they all extrude the same amount, just controlled by a fall off. And the point of a random effector is to have them extrude randomly. So we're going to fix that by simply changing the random mode to turbulence again, and. Now we get this really, really random result. And some of those are being extruded below zero, which we don't want. So we go into minimum and maximum and increase the minimum to a minimum of zero. And that's just going to make sure that nothing goes below zero, which is perfect. That's perfect. Uh, but I do, I do want it to extrude a bit taller. So let's go into the random effector and then change the position parameter to increase the extrusion. There we go, that's better. More city-like, I'd say. Now let's tidy up our workspace a bit. I'm gonna group these, select them, and then press Alt-G again to create a null, and name that null crystals, because uh, they're still crystals. Now the next step is to select the cloner object again and create a target effector. Because you know how Crystal Cluster has all the crystals kind of pointing out from a center, and that's kind of the effect I want to achieve with the uh, the target effector. So I create that, and let's just move it up a bit, and immediately you see that they are very much pointing away from a center. And this is basically the uh, well, all of the uh, polygons rotating and then extruding. Uh, but it's kind of inverted. We want the, the the crystals that are the furthest out from the center to be the most affected. So let's go in and create a fall off for this, a uh, spherical fall off again, and just scale that up a lot. Uh, whoa, whoa, not not that much. Hang on, just 
that much. There we go. And increase the fall of percentage a little bit. And to get the effect we want, we then just hit invert. And boom. One step closer to looking like a crystal cluster. Let's add that target to the group. And then we can move it around a little. Well, we, we could also not move it around a bit. And that's good too. What I might do though is move it on the Y axis a bit and just change the angle of the polygons a bit more. And then just scale up the, uh, the fall off on the Y axis. Right, it's getting there, bit by bit. But I still want a bit more random. So let's select the cloner, go into MoGraph, create a random effect or again. And then to not confuse ourselves, let's rename that random PSRs because it's position, scale, rotation. And the other random I'll probably name to just extrude. Now the randomness is probably a bit too high at the moment, so we don't want any on the Y axis and we just want a bit less on the X and the Z axis. But we do want some random scale, make that uniform. Yeah. And then if we just add a bit of random rotation as well, that is going to give us the randomness we desire. Yes, that looks more like a crystal cluster. A bit too much. Uh, let's turn it down. Yeah. All right. Let's just go through and make some final tweaks, starting with the target effect, just to make that affect the center as well a little bit. I'll increase the fall of percentage and that way we, we get a bit of effect on the and the center crystals as well and i think it kind of looks like the uh the lowest crystals are a bit too low so i want to go into the random effector and just slightly increase the minimum just turn it up to like 25 percent and uh, i guess increase the extrusion as well yeah and i just go and tweak it tweak the, the the curve on the fall off a bit again just to just to tweak it, just to tweak it a little bit. Tweak it. And when you're done tweak it, tweaking that, the shape is pretty much done. Yeah, I'm just gonna create one light for now, and simple point light, and uh, do a really quick render. Not amazing yet, but the shape is there. And next up in part two, that would be uh, shading and lighting. So that's when it's gonna start looking a bit pretty. So I hope I'll see you there. But for now, thank you ever so much for your time. And uh, until next time, stay in motion.